Uh, so I'm going to show you how to change your points on your, uh, this is an SL70 motor, but we're just going to kind of go through a overview of how to get the, into the points area on the stator plate, uh, removing the flywheel and just kind of what I do to get the point set up to a starting position where you can get some spark and then uh, I'll put a timing light and show you how I use that. Uh, so what we'll do is use a 17 millimeter, um, I use an impact wrench uh, driver with a 17 millimeter and you're going to remove your nut and then we have a specialty tool which you guys should get. Uh, they're I think mine's made by Motion Pro. Um, it's an M27 by 1.0, and it's left-handed threading. That's how these are threaded on the flywheel. So you're gonna end up putting it in. I'm gonna get it in there nicely. Make sure you can get some threads going on there, uh, and then you're turning it counterclockwise to to uh, set it and then you have this part that's gonna work as a press as it gets tightened to pull the flywheel back uh, and this is a 17 millimeter bolt mostly um, on these and I use my impactor to remove that but this is already pre loosened but it will pull the flywheel back and then you have access to your coils and your points on on this particular bike, we don't have a condenser in here because it's built onto the actual uh, coil that's up under the tank. So there's no condenser on this plate. Uh, you got your primary coil, which is going to be for your spark. This is your uh, secondary coil, which generates the power for your accessories, your lights, uh, and then your point system, point breaker here. Just make sure that your key is still good and present when you pull off your flywheel. Uh, this particular flywheel on these SL70s and CT70Hs have a um, dynamic uh, advancer for the cam timing or the spark timing. Um, not typical on your three speed motors, C50s or CT70s. Uh, you'll find these flywheels on the uh, H model or uh, you know, SL70s, uh, CL70s. Uh, this one actually is pretty dirty inside so I'm going to clean it off with a light sanding and uh, help clean off this magnet area. So what we're going to do is actually going to just replace that worn out uh, point. Uh, I have a Honda version here. Uh, we're just going to put this one on and then I'll show you uh, the next step how I just kind of get it set for uh, a spark and then we'll go into how to use a timing light. So I'm just going to go ahead and just, there's a Phillips head or flathead screw here that's holding the point on. I'm going to go ahead and just loosen that up. That's how you actually, that's the screw that you use for your uh, adjustment eventually, but it also holds it in place. This one is uh, somewhat stripped, so I'm going to replace it with a better screw. And as you can see, your point is loose at this point. I'm going to pull it. So now we have our point loose. I'm going to end up loosening this little nut here. Uh, we have our lead that goes onto our harness uh, up into the actual bike harness and up through here. I'm just going to remove this bolt to get the lead taken off. Now there's an isolator here that uh, keeps the conduction from going into the uh, frame of the actual point so just be aware that that uh, wire when you're putting it on your new point goes after the isolator so there's our old old point we're not just set that to the side uh, this one is a Honda part here 
Again, we have these isolators. These orange, brownish things are the isolators. So we're gonna make sure that our uh, connection goes after the isolator. I'm just gonna loosen my nut. Put on my new point. And then tighten it down. So it's like a good time to inspect kind of what's going on down here. You might see some oil leaking. Um, some of these wires could be frayed or exposed. So just take note of what you see and uh, replace as necessary. If there's weeping oil, it could be your crank seal or it could be the seals that are behind these um, JIS Phillips head looking bolts. There's an O-ring behind there and then there's a big O-ring that goes around the plate. Um, sometimes over time those will wear and wear down and break down and you start getting some oil seepage out of it. Uh, you can inspect your windings, make sure you don't have any broken wires. Um, Typically, they're, they're in good shape. You just want to make sure this is nice and nice and snug. And then, like I said, I have a new screw. I'm gonna put some new screws, a new screw in, because the other one was stripped. And I'm just gonna kind of match. There's a there's a little hatch mark or a little nib here that's cut out of the point, and then there's a same kind of hash mark area on the plate itself. So just kind of line those up initially, just to tighten that screw gently to hold it in place. I'll give you enough clearance to put the uh, flywheel back on, uh, since the inner flywheel has a um, cam that this is going to ride on that helps open and close it. Uh, what I need to do actually is uh, I'm going to clean this this out of here. Uh, so we'll just stop the video and then I'll show you once it's cleaned up. Alright so I had the Honda point installed and it was giving me clearance issues. So luckily I have another point. This is from a TV parts kit. Uh, I'll install that one and uh, check it, but uh, the Honda one certainly wasn't going to work for some reason. Crazy.
That should be good. Pretty tight. I'm not going to go anywhere. Wish I had my uh, magnetic screwdrivers right now, which I didn't bring out with me. So I'm just going to tighten this down so it's up a little bit. Alright, so I did clean the uh, flywheel out. Had a, this one, this bike rides by the ocean, so it had some buildup of some uh, from the sea salt and the air. Uh, I did put some lubrication. Uh, that's going to go on the taper of the crank in that area. This is the uh, timing ad advance mechanism, so you can check that, make sure it spins or, you know, as it actuates nice and smoothly. Put some uh, uh, lubricant in there if you like. Now you're going to want to match up to the keyway again. And uh, what actually holds it on the crank is the taper of both of these, the flywheel and the crank. And the bolt is just there to snug it up against each other. And the keyway is there to time it. But the tapers are what actually hold the flywheel on. All right, so flywheel's back on, got the new point in. Uh, what I'm gonna do next is turn my flywheel to just before the F mark on the flywheel and the hatch mark on the top of this case, side cover, or the side case. I put it maybe uh, an eighth inch bef before you rotate the flywheel. You wanna rotate your flywheel counterclockwise, so an eighth inch before the flywheel. This is how I do it. Loosen my screw in here holding my point. Now push my point down against the cam on the flywheel. And once it's pressed down, I'm going to tighten it back up. And I just want to see what the point is laying at here. You want it to start just start to open. Just start to open at the F mark. Or close to that area so that's kind of how I do that and I will try and test fire it let me see if I get spark real quick all right so I got spark and I'm gonna This is just in a rough adjustment to get spark, so let's see if my bike will start here at this point. You guys, he brought, he brought these planes over for you right here. All right, so just it started on my first kick. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now get my actual dynamic uh, um, timing here. I got my Harbor Freight timing light. Got a 12 volt source for it. And then I have it connected over here where it comes off the actual coil plug. I have it connected right here. That's part of the timing light. So it's gonna read the spark through there. And then I set my timing light to zero degrees on the back. So you wanna have that little arrow pointing to zero degrees on this, on this wheel that can rotate because you can use this to advance 
the uh, timing. And then I'm gonna shine my light and you can maybe see the F mark is a little bit advanced. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut the bike down and make a, an adjustment and see if I can't get that F mark to light up right there at that hatch mark. So let's turn it off and then I'm gonna make an adjustment. kids got some airplanes from the neighbor, so they're excited. All right, back to the bike. So I'm gonna set this camera here. So my next step, since I have it, flywheel turns counterclockwise, and my F mark was showing up before the hatch mark up here on the case my timing light it was showing up before that so I know that it's advanced if it was showing up uh, behind that line it would be retarded so it's advanced firing and I'm gonna try and just get it as close as possible if I can into the middle uh, hatch mark on the case so that it's just at zero degrees firing so this is kind of with the way I do it I just kind of play with it um, so I'm gonna bring it back up to about F mark now I did it about an eighth inch originally before the F mark when I set my timing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make it like maybe a half inch. Let me see what happens. Loosen that up. Push the point back down on the cam lobe. Now I'm gonna tighten it back down. And let's see. We'll see what that change has done here. So I'll kick it over again. Should start right up, hopefully. All right. I need some more adjusting here. I'm gonna start it back. Let's make an adjustment here. It's not where I want it. So let's do it one more time here. See if I can't get this to work quicker than later. All right, so we'll let's make sure that I'm uh, back at zero on my time light. That, that wheel doesn't turn on me. Let's we'll see what's going on. Give it another kick. bit more I think. Let's see. This one's a little harder to get fine-tuned because the actual advancing arms are in the way here.
up for me. So I'm happy with that right there. The F mark is like right, just slightly advanced. So I'll just kind of, I'll keep that there. Motor's gonna run good. That's how you use the timing light. I always use the timing light. Uh, no guesswork involved, uh, other than just getting the initial spark and then uh, use the timing light to get right there where you want it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. All right, I'm back. I just, I'm back. I just wanted to show you guys how easy it, once it's, you know, once you get that good timing, uh, you know, how easy it is to get it to kick over on the first try. So, turn it on. Gentle kick, nice and easy.